So, you know, back in December, I myself was, I got through like a real big battle of codependency or self-love, mm-hmm. a deficit in December-ish. I got into a real funk with it. Right. And I went back to my workbooks and all of those things to just start concentrating on myself. And what happened one day when I was, I was really struggling and I was sitting in a chair in my room and it was like, a, it's a, everyone, this is going to be really weird, but I was like, a, I saw like a vision of my codependent self coming at me right. and it was very clear and it was really ugly looking version of me and very distorted. And it scared me so much. It was like a real, it was like a jump scare in a horror film. And my, I, my heart just went and like, I could feel it like just skip and pop and like turn. Right. And, or at least in my mind, that's what happened. And at that point, like a calmness kind of came over me and I was able to feel it in a way which I had never been able to feel it before. I'm an overthinker. Right. And so to feel something in my body is uh, unusual. And when that happened, I really started to think of these things in a different way, or at least in a a way where, you know, you said it can manifest in so many different ways with different right. people. It's, and I was like, I, for me, uh, I just started being like, okay, it manifests in this way with like this person, right? but it can manifest and look something completely different when I'm interacting with another person. Uh, you know, this, I can be codependent on things and not just people. And um, what is what, like, and then it, it came back to, you know, being a self-love deficit person is when I think of um, addiction and and things along those lines, that's a codependency. That's a self-love deficit in in a way as well. I'm trying to fill something, a, a deficit in me. And as someone who sat there and be like, okay, what, what else am I doing? And I started to think about, well, why am I doing things and why am I continuing these things if they're hurting me? Right. And to me, it all started coming back to, um, fear and fear being the biggest thing. Right. But so fear of what fear? Well, there's so many different aspects of a human being. Um, no, 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 no. We're not going to. <laughs> yeah, so I, I am going to suggest, and, and yeah. I'm going to hold my comments, of course, because I want to hear what you have to say, but I'm going to suggest it's fear of being alone and unloved. Um, and I'll explain that later. And if it doesn't fit, that's fine. Okay, but go ahead. I uh, know, like um, with uh, f- fear of being alone and unloved, fear of being rejected. Okay. Um, and, uh, but, uh, you know, fear of, you know, my Enneagram is, is a type six. Um, my biggest issue is security. So for the most part, it's um, security, feeling secure, feeling so, that someone is reliable. So, so it's this fear of losing security, which is actually really common for SLDs or codependents. But please, please continue. I guess that's where I, I started. It's about, and I was like, okay. If I'm, um, if I'm concentrating so much on somebody else, mm-hmm. I'm losing out on myself is, is what I started to be like, really start to hammer home. And I started, when I got that, that vision, I was like, this is the person that is talking to the other person. Look at that creature. <laughs> like I had to be like, okay, I, I, I just, sometimes you just clicks and you, and you get it. But for me, uh, you know, security, reliability, um, knowing, um, you know, it, um, communicating properly becomes part of that whole equation. Right. Um, and, and just that could be a whole string kind of going down the lines yeah. of like, I never learned how to communicate properly. 
Um, so communicating becomes a difficult thing, even though I want it, but I don't know how. Um, and but security as a whole would be security over love. Right. And and um, do you have more to say? Because I don't want to interrupt you. Because I oh, no, 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 I'm good. So um, I'm glad you said that. So there's a lot of things I want to touch on. Um, I created a, um, a, a I created a, not only a whole program and different treatment techniques, but one of the ones that I'm most proud of is what I call my Hitch uh, Trauma Resolution Integration Method, and um, and what I explain in that is that we identify the trauma that is responsible for SLDD codependency in our bodies because trauma, and, and now I'm going to just actually take a little bit of a turn and I'm going to come back. Um, and if I don't, please remind me of, of, of the, your, the body trauma is so after the human magnet syndrome, as I explained, I created the term self-love deficit disorder. And then I wanted to create, because what I, there doesn't need to be these really complicated explanations unless it's necessary. And I came up with this, what I believe was a simple explanation for what causes SLDD. And if you can imagine a, um, a pyramid at the foundation is attachment trauma. Every SLD, every codependent I know, everyone has in their childhood experienced a trauma in their, the whole span of their childhood because of a narcissistic parent and a codependent parent uh, of not being conditionally loved and all the harm that happens because of being raised by narcissists. From attachment trauma comes a formation of core shame, which is this fundamental belief that you're only good enough if you can help another person take care of another person. And that if people knew who you really were, you wouldn't be love, lovable. So there's this fundamental um, feeling of inadequacy and brokenness. So from core shame is this existential disease, which I call pathological loneliness. It's this bone aching feeling of, of loneliness that will precede a relationship or it will come after it. That if you are not in a relationship, you feel the searing conscious pain of the shame and the trauma. From that is the addiction what I call SLDD addiction or codependency addiction. It is the compulsive um, um, search for a, a way to get rid of that pain of loneliness. And the only thing that does that is a relationship. It is an addiction to the relationship. And because of the human magnet syndrome and what I describe, why narcissists are always attracted to SLDs or codependents, that relationship is going to be with a narcissist. And then at the very top of, of, the, uh, of the pyramid is SLDD or codependency. And that's, what, that's all of the information you'll see in every other book about codependency. It's traits, it's explanations, it's the way you think, the way you feel, lack of boundaries, you know, insecurity. And so when you understand, when a person understands that SLDD is caused by deeper influences that are unconscious. Attachment trauma is blocked away, just like PTSD. Core shame is partially blocked away. And so when I created that explanation, people started to go, oh my gosh, now I understand why I keep falling in love with the, you know, the same person, but uh, with a different face. It goes back to my childhood and it starts to guide people toward what they need to do in order to unravel it. Then they understand about the core shame and the self-love deficit. And then they understand the pain of, of, of pathological loneliness is so deep that it drives people um, to stay with a narcissist, even if um, they're not feeling good. So back to what you said, that you had this watershed moment, this epiphany, because you felt something in your body. Um, that was your attachment trauma speaking to you that of course you don't know exactly what it is because you need to be in a certain type of therapy with a um, trauma experienced therapist. And because of your intellect, your emotional intelligence and your motivation to like want to be a better version of yourself, you heard it might not have understood what it was and it puts you on a path 
of recovery. And so in that moment, I see you responding to that invisible trauma and the, the shame and the need to be happy. So when you said to me, your core issue was security, security. Um, and, and if, and of course I would never do this because, you know, you know, I'm on a podcast, but just say, hypothetically, if we were in a therapy session and you were my client, I would just ask a bunch of questions and then I would easily get you to understand that security is about not being abandoned. It's about being loved unconditionally. It's about being accepted, not, you know, it's, it's, it's really about, um, that, that goes back to the, uh, the, the attachment trauma, the core shame and the need for someone just to be around. And so I'm glad you explained it that way, because my guess is so many people that follow you have those body feelings, but they don't know what they mean because the connection to the memory is purposely hidden by the brain. So I just had to say that hopefully I didn't get too psychological on you and hopefully it made sense. I don't know. Bring the psychology on to me. Let's fix me right now. <laughs>